This week on Arts Insight, bold designs on canvas. I like leaving the story a little bit more open-ended for the viewer. A hip-hop dance lab. Freezes and head spins and windmills and things like that, that's all breaking. And that is actually the, the truest form of hip-hop dance. One-of-a-kind skateboards. When I go down to the skate park, which I do pretty much every day after work, I see kids riding my boards. I mean, that's a, that's a great feeling. And transforming discarded objects. I stamped everything 100% art so that everybody would know it's just like 100% cotton. I'm Ernie Manus, and it's time to get arts in sight. Welcome to the season premiere of Arts Insight. Today, we're at a brand new intimate downtown performance space called The Rec Room. Stick around to hear how they're planning to enhance the standard live experience. But first, a contemporary Texas painter's experimental human-sized canvases showcase both a boldness of image and his foundation in cartooning. as an undergraduate, I, <laughs> at that particular point in time, I was very much interested in doing a daily comic strip. That was where my focus was, and then I wanted to move more in a contemporary art direction. But I sort of drug, this drug award, <laughs> I drug all the cartooning stuff along with me then. I knew I still wanted to kind of use it as a device within the work at that time, and I continue to do so. I like the gestural mark making. You have to kind of ride the lightning a little bit more. You have to like dance with the chaos in order to get it to work. I like leaving the story a little bit more open-ended for the viewer. You know, I try and get out of my own way as part of the process. There is an element of the subconscious that sometimes becomes conscious and sometimes doesn't. If that happens, I'm usually aware of it after the fact. I'm reflecting back on what I already did. When you finish a a piece of artwork, the end result is, for me, is to make it feel different than the one before and not repeat myself. And sometimes that's an incremental difference in the last piece, sometimes it's a huge leap forward and not like a tiny step. I don't want this to feel like something I did before it. I want something about it to be unique. I mean, I certainly have a very specific visual language that employs gestural mark making and cartoonish references and hard edge geometric abstraction and now this sort of physicality of material with collage. But hopefully I'm not being redundant. I like coming up with titles that are sometimes incredibly philosophical. A lot of them are rooted in social commentary. A lot of times they're really ridiculous and even sophomoric. I give myself permission to like leave that, that world completely open however I choose. I am the benevolent dictator of the work here in my studio, you know. I like the wordplay of it. I mean, I like making things that are energetic, that have a lot of physicality to them. There's a lot of bravado in the work, you know, because I think it takes confidence and technical ability to pull that off, and I'm still kind of I'm kind of there with, that's where I'm at with the work. At least right now, I mean, maybe I'll get a little older, mellow out, and I'll do some like mellow seascape painting or a monochromatic thing that you meditate on in a quiet room, who knows? But where I'm at right now, I still like them to feel like they've got a lot of raw power. Sometimes I think of the work as kind of like an intellectual primal animal. I want the work to still continue to kick you in the crotch while tickling you under the arm at the same time. Check out howardsherman.com to see a gallery of his work. Now we're back at the Rec Room, an experimental live performance space in downtown Houston. It just opened, so let's find out what's coming up soon. Joining us is one of the co-founders, Stephanie Whittles-Wax. Hello, Stephanie. Hi. Okay, it's a Rec Room. Yes. What does that mean to us? What does that mean? Um, so Rec Room is about doing performance that is recreational. Um, when we sat down to figure out what we wanted to do, um, we looked at recreation and what that means. And what it means is leisure uh, when you're not working. And I'm a theater artist. My partner, Matt Hewn, is a theater artist. Um, we've done theater for 30 years. Uh, 
I don't I feel leisurely at the theater. <laughs> um, I, I feel like there's some rules and restrictions that you have to abide by, like being on time and I mean, like general polite things. Courtesies, Courtesy, basically. Yes. yes, human decency. <laughs> I'm really against human decency. Um, you know, you can't um, you can't text, you can't unwrap candies, you can't talk to your neighbor. You're in the dark. So, you know, theater is kind of sold as this communal experience. But what I have found is that it's actually sort of solitary. So we wanted to create a space where we could see live performance, but it would be fun. It so would be so you're breaking social. down the convention of theater. Essentially, yes. So I come to this space. I don't mm -hmm. even want to call it a theater. I come to this performance space. Thank you. And what do I expect as a patron coming in? Yeah, um, I, I think it is. A lot of our patrons have said it's a little frightening at first to walk in. <laughs> you know, what are they? What are they going? You know, when I when I walk up the aisles and cast the show before it, you know, I have audience members who look truly terrified. But you can always expect to see something that is accessible, that is sort of minimalistic, that has a lot of passion and energy, that is using the audience. It is a little bit interactive, which I know can t freak some people out. It's very laid back. You don't know what you're going to see. You don't know what you're going to expect. So people leave and they feel energized. Well, people don't want to leave, especially on Mondays when they come here, because you guys are doing something really kind of fun and different. Yes. Okay. This is, yes, it is. And <laughs> I, I'm in love with it. Um, so I grew up in the 90s. I was a teenager in the 90s, and I was extremely infatuated with my so-called life, the TV show. It was one of those brilliant but canceled TV shows that was on network television. It would never fly being on network television today. They, ta they tackle topics that are just taboo. We've, we're going backwards, in case you <laughs> yes. were wondering. Um, so the show itself is extremely angsty. It's all teenage drama. And it is dramatic, the way that they've done it in the show. I realize that if you put that on stage, it would be extremely funny. <laughs> um, well, that was the idea I had. So what we're doing is 19 Mondays of my so-called life, but it's not the actual show. There's a fan site, and we take the scripts from the fan site, and we read them exactly as they are, with all the typos, with all the commentary from the person who's transcribing the episode. <laughs> so that's basically the show. Audience members are cast in the show. There are a core group of actors that I have that come every week, um, but student one, student two, Melba the waitress, Bernice, Brian Krakow's mom, it all comes from the audience. And each week we get a little more um, uh, risky. So yes. last, last night for the first time, which was the fourth one, we made an audience member actually come down and be on the stage. <laughs> Uh, and it was amazing. I had my father be in it last night. He is 74. He is not an actor, but I needed an old guy. And I was like, Dad, Resident it's old you. Guy. It's He's you. Right there. Um, Outside of that, what else can we come to expect from the space? What else are you going to be booking in here? Music and theater is what we, we, we like that intersection. We are doing a concert series here called Live at Rec Room. And uh, once a month, we will have different sorts of concert series that aren't just music, that involve some kind of scenery or lighting or um, reading of something simultaneously. So blending those those forms and really being multidisciplinary is what we want to do here. Well, we look forward to seeing what else you've got. Thank I'd say up you. your sleeves, but you're not wearing any. But no, in, that, in that crazy little head of yours of more exciting stuff here at Rec Room. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Visit RecRoomHTX.com to learn more. Next, a dance class in Ohio that swaps out point in pirouettes for locking and breaking. There's nothing else in the world like dance. Your mind is completely focused on the choreography and the music and you don't even think about anything else at all. It's kind of like inspirational when I come here because when I'm at school I just can't wait to get to dance. Funk Lab is a hip hop dance studio located here in Kettering, Ohio. I have over 200 students traveling from 40 local zip codes. We have classes for children on the autism spectrum. We're basically a very inclusive studio here. I started dancing when I was seven years old. And at the time, it was the early 90s, late 80s, and hip hop was becoming very popular. And that was something that I enjoyed so much at the studio that I grew up at. Over the years, it became increasingly difficult to find hip hop dance classes and that's really what I enjoyed. I did move to Chicago right after I graduated college, did some training there, um, became homesick, and moved back and made it my mission to bring hip-hop classes 
to Dayton so I could enjoy what I'm doing but also live around my family and friends. Hip hop um, is very urban and it's, there's different styles. There's like street styles and then there's like drill team hip hop. Drill team hip hop is the general effect of the entire routine and urban hip hop is more like how it feels to the dancer and it's just how the dancer feels like dancing it instead of showing it off, you know. So we offer urban choreography classes and those classes are more structured in nature, like a music video style dance, although it's age appropriate. When you get into some of the more street styles like popping and breaking, um, those are more of a class that requires less structure. Students are taught moves and then they're taught how to freestyle in circles that are called ciphers. They also are taught how to battle as well. When you see dancers uh, do freezes and head spins and windmills and things like that, that's all breaking. And that is actually the, the truest form of hip hop dance. When you get into the popping style, that's more of like the robot or um, some of the glides that Michael Jackson used to do with the moonwalk. Those are all part of popping. And locking is sort of your old school 80s rolling of the wrists and pointing um, that's featured in movies like Break In, Electric Boogaloo, and those type of things. So those are the styles that we have here. Unfortunately, there's um, a new dance craze called twerking and, and we don't do that here and so I have to explain that to people like this is age appropriate movement. Um, we actually teach true hip hop here. It isn't about, you know, shaking your butt <laughs> basically. It's more about learning the actual true dance style. Sometimes people think that their kids are going to get into trouble or that this represents um, a negative lifestyle but this actually has changed so many lives for the better. Dance is a great outlet for children who maybe don't feel accepted at school or maybe are being bullied. They really feel like a part of a family when they come here and so it's more of a positive experience here than a negative and I just explain that to people. Dancing in general is just a different way that people can show how they are in like their personalities. Like some people enjoy doing art, like I enjoy doing dancing, which is what I love to do. <laughs> like I always dance in the kitchen or in the living room. It's just like my dad does it too with me. It's just you can never really take dancing away from someone. It's just kind of who they are. I set very high standards for the kids, but not too high to where they can't reach them. And they always try their best to get to that point, you know, and I can tell that they're working really hard in practice and I push them to a good extent, you know, that they can get to where they need to be for competition season and even for the recreational kids, you know, I don't just let them run around and do whatever because they're not competing, they still have to have a focus and a foundation. All right, I'll see you guys next week. And the hip hop community, battling is your way of competing. So there are different local um, events where you can go out and you can battle. And a lot of this when you're an adult is done in a club setting or in a park setting. Um, and so we struggle with having events for kids. So we've created some of our own. When it comes to urban choreography, we actually do competitions where we create routines. Um, and that is a big part. And the kids absolutely love competing and they're really excited to do so. We started at a small studio and we had such great community support and such great business here that we were able to expand into this new studio. And that to me was a very proud moment because a lot of studios, especially hip hop in nature, um, aren't able to survive um, because it's a very difficult business to be in. So when I was able to move into a larger space um, and recognize that my dream was coming true, um, that was a very proud moment for me. For more information, go to funklabdayton.com. Up next, a duo who dreams up and creates unique skateboard designs at a Detroit skate shop. I think skateboarding has as much self-expression to it as drawing does. I think it's very creative because you can get out there and just 
know, be without limits, do whatever you want, express yourself however you want, which is what I do when I draw. And a skateboard is a blank canvas. There's absolutely no limit to what I can put on there. For me, it's just a perfect outlet because I can be 100% creative. A lot of it is just carryover of my own personal style I developed when I was in school. And I'm really influenced by surrealism. I really like any kind of classic art. I like things that are representational. I've spent a lot of time in tattoo parlors, so I guess I get influenced by traditional Japanese imagery and even American traditional stuff. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I, I love it. It's, it's incredible. Um, it's, I get to see like the whole process of it. We have these small little almost skateboard shaped pieces of paper that they'll start drawing and it'll just be a few lines here and there. At first you kind of don't know what they're going to do with it. And then you like go home for the day and come back and there's a little bit of a masterpiece on this piece of paper. So it's incredible to just see like it slowly come together as a graphic and then to see that graphic that's probably drawn up on a piece of paper that's like four inches by eight inches turn into a 30 inch by eight inch board coming to us in like a real professional condition. It's, it's really incredible to just look and be like, my, my homie drew that up and then I'll apply it and uh, take it down to the park and just to see the community of Ann Arbor just love it so much, it, uh, it's really an incredible feeling. Here in Ann Arbor, there's a, there's a strong sense of community um, you can get that feel walking around downtown. A lot of people are are big on like what's happening here, like let's keep it here, let's help each other out. So it's cool to see like that our skateboard shop has an organically grown Ann Arborite and uh, to see the kid who grew up down the street come up with professional style boards is really something to be proud of. When I go down to the skate park, which I do pretty much every day after work, I see kids riding my boards. I mean, that's a, that's a great feeling because then I know, I mean, it's not only something that I enjoy doing, but, you know, the community has had a pretty positive response to it as well. The flop house is just a way for me to stay connected. We did, uh, the total ended up being 160 decks for them for the grand opening. I never really knew anything about how the graphics were designed growing up buying skateboards and, and being in the skateboard culture. So I never got to see it put together. I just always figured that there was some behind the scenes computer guy who just like came up with these things like it was, it was easy to do. And then to first hand watch these things be drawn out by hand not just like computer animated. You know, I really get to see the time and the effort that's, that's logged into coming out with a finished piece. And something that's been really cool around here is um, we do like custom style skateboards. So people can come to us with their own ideas and um, we'll take their idea, use our artists really incredible ability to put their idea on a canvas and we'll see the community's ideas on the bottom of a skateboard. So that's really cool. I mean, we've had all sorts of different people who want these, these different style boards. We've had like rap groups who want their kind of logos and stuff on there, which is, has turned out really incredible. We have people from like Southern Pacific Islands that have their own style to it. So just in, the small time that we've been open, we've been able to see all sorts of different cultures, tastes on, on artwork and what they would want on the bottom of a skateboard. It's something I gotta get out there. Like I've found, it's, I guess it's just a source of personal fulfillment. The way I feel when I draw something that I'm proud of or, you know, I'd see Johnny on his skateboard throw a big trick and get that smile on his face. I mean, it's just fulfilling to me. For me, drawing up graphics and stuff is never, that's not my strong suit. I'm lucky if I like remember all the arms and legs on a stick figure, so for me the skateboarding part is the creative aspect. When I get out there, my mind just frees up. I'm not worried about what's happening in my life, really, you know, the problems have gone away. I can do whatever I want virtually out there, you know, I can 
if I want to jump on this, I can do that. You know, I can really kind of test my own abilities and strengths on a board. And uh, to, to stand on a board that's been fully put together by me and my friends, it's, uh, it's, it's got a strong sense of pride. In a way, um, a lot of the younger kids will look up to us older riders. And when I go out to the skate park and pop some tricks that some kids like, and I'm, I'm doing it on the boards that I've created in a way, it, it seems like uh, I can show these kids that you dream big and work hard at something, you can get there and do it too. Want to see more ideas? You can explore a variety of skateboard designs on Pinterest. And finally tonight, a retired art teacher from Wisconsin finds beauty in discarded items. She transforms lost works into fun, vibrant pop sculptures. I still don't really have a good name for what I do. It's just fun. And I love every minute that I'm working on it. I'm Ramona Audley, and I am an artist. I retired, but I could not give up the art that was so much a part of my life. Ramona does very eclectic art. She calls it 100% art for a lot of different reasons. Uh, my favorite one is it is 100% Ramona. I stamped everything 100% art so that everybody would know it's just like 100% cotton. She's very flamboyant. She loves colors, loves detail, animals, flora, fauna, everything. I I'm always looking. I'm always looking for things that might end up in a landfill. She'll find a piece that most people would look at and not give it a second thought. She can look beyond that and say, okay, if this was mine, what would I do with it to make it fit in my house? And in her house, bright colors, checkers, flowers, you know, anything that looks like the outdoors that now she can bring inside, that's what she likes to paint and that's what she's the best at. And it's some way of expressing me. I think my art is something that that starts uh, growing way down deep inside me. It's something that I have a feeling for. She'll look at something that's broken and say, I can fix that, or I know somebody who can fix it and I can make it look so much better than what it is now. A lot of these items are designed to be either indoor or outdoor use. We want to make sure we're finding stuff that can withstand the elements. So anything animal related is great. Anything incorporate flowers is a, is a big thing for her. Everything's all done by hand. She's got a couple different varieties of paints that she used, but they're all high gloss, liquid based enamels. So you have to use a really, on these, a really good quality of paint. I put on multiple coats and I look at them and maybe something comes to mind. It gives me an opportunity to use color. I loved every, everything that is color. I don't think that I really love things that are completely realistic. But I like the idea of putting different colors together and see what I'm doing grow. She likes using these intense colors. The brighter, the better. They look great when you first put them on, but once you put on this top coat to seal it, it just electrifies it. It looks even more intense than what it started with. The black piping that's on the outside is one of the last things that she will do. Again, one of her trademarks. Let's put down the flowers, but instead of trying to do a traditional shading on it like a normal painter would do, she's just gonna give it more of that block primitive style with the outlining on each one. Just really sets off the colors. I think you just have to do your thing. It's pop art, but it's eclectic at the same time. I think we can kind of bridge the gap between traditionalists and people like modern art and pop art, and these items will fit the bill. You know, to look at your mother and think of her as an artist, you saw it all these years, but to then suddenly see the reaction that people have, you're like, well, you know, maybe she's got something here. If it serves a purpose in your life, it makes, if it makes you feel better, or it's something that you really, really want to do, do it. You 
you've got some inner feelings, you've got some inner emotions, the best way to express it is going to be through artwork. And she did that all during the early years and she still does it to this day. Now here you can have a local talent that's here in Pewaukee that suddenly can do these really interesting things. When you see this, it does make you think, it does make you smile, it does make you laugh, and it just makes you look at things a little bit differently. So if they always remember that about Ramona, I think that's a big success. I don't ever want to get to the point where I can't keep on doing because I like them. They are much fun to do. See more of her work at gallery1art.com. Just find Ramona under Local Artists. And that does it for this edition of Arts Insight. For all of us here at Houston Public Media, I'm Ernie Manous. Thanks for watching and have a great week.